Welcome everybody to today's training on how to build an internal knowledge base for your team. My name is Melody and I'm so excited to welcome you to our second weekly training session on how to use ClickUp to improve your customer success. My name is Melody and I'm super excited because today we're going to dive into how to leverage training at scale without hiring a big team, without doing really long and lengthy standard operating procedures with something very cheap and efficient using ClickUp's documents. So the first thing that I want to talk to you a little bit more about is how to set up your documents, how to leverage the standard operating procedure that I use for my existing workflows, and how you can share these documents and format them to your clients without having to host them or print out a very lengthy document. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on over to ClickUp. All right, so I am here inside of ClickUp and here you can see that I am showing you the homepage. One of the things that I like to do is show you where to find your ClickUp documents. And the first place to find it is the document setting. So on the left hand side of the screen, you're going to see this says docs and you can actually look at all of the documents that you currently have. Now, if we take a look and click on all, I'm going to zoom in for a sec. If we click underneath all, you can now see there is actually a filter for all of your documents. So if, let's say you wanted to search for a specific document. You can do that by searching for the name. I'm going to look up blog. And here you can see that I have a multitude of different types of blog types of documents pulling up. So here you can see I have a blog post publishing checklist. You can see the actual location here where it's located in. And then you can see any associated tags. If there was tags associated with this specific document. Now, what are internal knowledge bases? Internal knowledge bases are essentially a way to allow your team members and or your agency workers to really understand a process or workflow. In some companies, they call this a team training hub. Other places they call uh, their online training as hosted on a learning management system, maybe a training portal, regardless of what you want to call it. It's basically a way to train your team members to execute on specific tasks. Now, as a previous instructional designer, I had to spend a lot of times creating training curriculum, videos, and help articles in order for employees to be more efficient and help to improve the company's efficiencies. So if you're an agency owner or a course creator and you're starting to build up your team, or maybe you're an existing small business owner or a manager and you want to find a more efficient way to support your internal team members, workflows and processes without having to manually communicate all these steps one by one, then this is going to be incredibly helpful. So let's go back over to ClickUp and I'm going to show you how to create that knowledge base so you don't have to spend as much manual time explaining how to accomplish a specific task. Let's head back over. All right, so we're here back again in ClickUp and I showed you where the documents live underneath docs, then all. And one thing I can do is I can either create a new document here or I can open an existing document. Now documents can live a lot of different places. We can have them live in a task. We can have them live as an attachment and you can also pin views. You can have them listed under a specific list. So lots of different options there for you for your documents. So let's go ahead and show you a very commonly frequently used template and that's going to be available within my spaces. So I'm going to show you an example of my podcast workflow underneath my folder podcast workflow. So if we take a peek here, I'm into podcast workflow. And um, what I'm going to do is right here, you can see uh, a lot of my pieces of content, but really what I want to look at, and again, I'm a little bit behind on some of these items, but you want to take a look at this podcast workflow. And so I want to show you an example of a standard operating procedure for a blog post publishing process. And so right here within this list view, I'm going to click on the carrot icon. You can see all these subtasks. 
And again, this is one way that you can create a document and save it as a template. So every time that someone applies to speak with me on my podcast, I attach a template to their submission so that this template, this main task and all these subtasks come directly underneath it. What's great about this, it also allows me to connect attachments and relationships. So I'll give you an example of a blog post publishing checklist, which is a very simplistic standard operating procedure. This is not very fancy at all, but it is very efficient. So I'm going to click on this attachment here and here you can see I have just a simple bullet list, create a new post, import, um, import the template settings from Elementor, allow this to load. And again, this is where we can easily take a Loom video and I'm going to show you how to add that in a second and get the students and or internal team members to follow this process. And what's great about this is I can actually add this task directly from the list of subtasks that I pulled in from the actual main task area. So if I actually break this down here for you, this is going to look like your main task, your subtasks, and then I'm pulling in that information directly into this document. So what's great about this is a replicatable process. Every time there's a new podcast episode or a blog post, they're going to follow this process. The team member knows exactly what to do and I can reinforce learning in a very structured, uh, non time consuming way by having all of these tasks included. So I'll show you really quickly if I wanted to create some more visibility on the how to, this is what I would do. I would essentially take a video like Loom or a Vimeo or a YouTube and privately list it. And then I would embed it directly onto this document. So if we actually head over to Loom, I've got an example of a tutorial video. And again, this is not specific to this type of blog post publishing checklist, but I'm going to copy this link and then I'm heading back to this document. Now what's great, I'm going to show you a little tool and that is I'm going to take my this area here, I'm going to press that button on my keyboard and then I can actually type loom right here. So if you again, you saw that I basically, basically did a backspace. Then I saw that there is a shortcut. So I just enter in loom, pop it in there, and then um, I can go ahead and paste because I'm on a Mac, I'm doing Command V, but if you're on a PC, it would be con co Control V. So I'm gonna press Return or Enter, and then there you go. I have a completely formatted, embedded Loom video directly showing how to create the step-by-step -step process outlined within this document. So, so was that helpful? I really hope it was. That is how I create an internal process for a knowledge base. Now, if I wanted to actually share this with an internal team member who had a question on how to follow my step-by-step -step process, I can actually share that document. I'm gonna pop over and take a, a little bit of a peek here for you. And I'm gonna click on this link that says share. Now I'm gonna show you something here. If I wanted to share it with someone who's already inside of ClickUp and they are a team member, meaning they have certain access, they are not a guest, but they're already a member, um, you're going to go ahead and click on this private link. And you can see here it says only those with permissions can access this link. So if they have access to this space or this list, um, we can go ahead and copy this link, which is great. If I wanted to, for instance, share this with a customer who is not a current existing member, they do not have access to the space or this list, then I would click on this icon here that says public link. Now a few things I want to mention about this is the expiry link is basically it's saying do you want to set a time limit on this link? This is really helpful if you have a set time period 
when this document is going to be visible based off of a contract um, or if you just really don't want it to be viewed after a certain time after a project closes. Share link with search engines. I never click this unless there was a specific reason like I'm selling something and I want to build traffic there. I'm going to keep all these other settings, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this public link. You see that it's a copy. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste it into this area. So I'm pasting it into this new area and you can see that it's pulling up and here you go. So here I can see it says edit document. So keep that in mind. You can protect your document if this is client facing. And depending on your access level and who's giving access and who's seeing it, they will or will not have access to editing. So definitely do keep that in mind. And then here you can see everything on this area. We can download this. You can see who created it. So let's go back over to ClickUp. Hoping, I'm hoping this has been helpful for you so far. Um, I can deselect that public link again. Um, and if I really wanted to protect it, I could go ahead, let's say if I said public, and then I said protect document, um, I could definitely do that. So let's see, lock this view and prevent accidental changes. So you can absolutely do that um, depending on your specific plan. So um, really awesome way to share a document. Okay, so today I showed you how to create and format your document with tasks. I also shared with you how to embed a Loom video and then I shared with you how to share a specific link to an external client or to set an expiration, expiration for your documents. So a very helpful way for you to organize your internal trainings, your Loom videos that are just really taking up space in your inbox and there's not an organized space for you to do that. Now, I do want to show you a few different tips about how you can leverage workflows I'll show you how my workflow runs together. And then I also specifically, before I do that, I'm going to share with you how to create a specific formatted document completely from scratch. So let's go ahead and head back to ClickUp. Okay, so we're back inside of ClickUp and I wanna show you how to create a document from scratch. And as I mentioned, there's a couple places to organize that. The first place is to organize your docs and add a brand new document underneath the documents area on the left hand side of your screen. To add new, click add new, and then we're gonna rock and roll into creating a brand new document. All right, so here you go. If you're familiar with Notion, then this will look very similar. We have the main page here. We have also sub pages on the left hand side, and here you can see the breadcrumbs, similar to if you were to use something like that in Notion. So I'm going to format this document and say example document. Sorry for my typing if it's a little bit loud. And then I'm going to actually add a cover. So very similar look and feel to Notion. We're gonna add a cover here. Click here and I can change this. I can upload an image link or use something from Unsplash. I am going to choose this pretty window here. And I think that's pretty nice. So I'm gonna do that image. If I wanted to reposition this, again, I could change that, save the position, uh, and then I'm going to save that, okay? And then again, I can also add an icon. Again, very similar to Notion, almost a little bit to co copycat, but it is something for you to take a look at. I can add a relationship to the document. If there was an existing template or another page link, I could add that right there as well. Okay, so here's how you can format your document by using some short keys. So if you're brand new to short keys, short keys will give you the ability to customize what you can format on your document really quickly. So I'm gonna show you two, and then we will be wrapping up. So first one I'm going to share with you is the backspace. Backspace gives you the ability to see all of these different things that you can add. You can customize the background colors, you can highlight text, you can format it text, you can add bullet points, you can even um, you know, embed other videos or content like GIFs or GIFs, depending on how you say it. So I'm gonna actually click on 
backspace, then I'm going to actually, uh, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a new hotkey. Okay, so I'm going to do heading two, and then I'm going to say jump on it. And then I'm going to drag with my cursor and highlight the entire text. From here, I'm going to select Command Shift H. And here you can see that immediately what happened was after I highlighted it, this font color started to turn this yellow. So there you see, I was able to highlight it. And again, that's Command Shift H or Control Shift H if you're on a PC. And then if I wanted to create a comment, I can do that a couple ways. Let's do another text. I'm gonna highlight this again. And let's do Command Shift M. So Command Shift M immediately pulled up this pop-up window that allows me to comment and type backspace for command or forward slash. I, I don't think I said that correctly, so forward slash. So if I wanted to mention somebody, I would pull this up. If I wanted to comment and say, come back to this later, I can definitely do that and press enter or click on comments. And there, if I hover over, you can see there that I have now this thread of comments. I can also see on the right hand side, I see this little comment bubble, which shows me what's happening. So we have this formatting and let's say that we wanted to create another shortcut key. And I'm gonna show you one last shortcut key. And again, this is available on all ClickUp plans. Um, definitely take a look at how you can use this in your own business. It's really, really helpful. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to find another hotkey. Okay, so if I wanted to create jump on it, I'm going to highlight this again and let's hope that this works because it was having a little bit of challenges before. Command Shift T. Oh, nope, that is not going to work. So it did not work for me at that time. You never know with these things. So hopefully that is uh, not gonna happen to you. So let's go back um, to this example document. Um, so, you know, here's what I will say about this is if you wanted to highlight it, this tray comes up here with different things that you can pull up. Um, this says command option T. I haven't actually found it to work personally with this hotkey, even though it says that that's supposed to work. But there's some really good uh, shortcuts that you can use, which I showed you too. So definitely use the hotkeys to create content quickly. It's very effective, especially if you're using Loom in your business or if you wanted to type out some quick content. All right. So... Today, we talked a lot about how to leverage your documents and share them with your customers or your internal team members. And I shared with you some really cool tips on how to use shortcuts in your ClickUp documents. But I would love to know how you are using ClickUp documents. And if you have a specific workflow that you'd like me to take a look at, I would absolutely love to, to connect up with you, to hear from you. So comment, share this resource with other people who are trying to create better customer success for their internal team members, or they're really trying to create a better experience for their customer and repeat the process in a sustainable way. I know I shared with you earlier, I was going to talk a little bit more about podcasting and the workflow, but since it is a Friday afternoon and we've already been online for a couple minutes now, I would love to know whether or not that would be helpful for you. So comment below, would the podcast workflow be helpful for you to show how I did it on my workflow using documents. I would love to know. Let me know. And that's it for today's training. I hope that this was helpful and I can't wait to see you next week where we're going to be talking about different steps that you can use with ClickUp. And that's it for today's show. We'll see you next time. See you next Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Head on over to join me on TikTok and follow me here on LinkedIn for some more 